All right. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Thursday. Wherever you are, whatever time of day it is, whatever you're doing this morning, good morning. Thanks for joining us today on this thankful Thursday. That's not the title this morning, but it is a thankful Thursday. Josh did a, uh, Joshua did a great job yesterday. Good morning, all of you that are joining us today. I hope you've already had some time with the Lord. I hope you've already had some time to be in prayer, to be in God's word this morning. Um, thanks for joining us, whether you're in Florida, whether you are in California, whether you're in Texas like I am this morning. Uh, my wife and I are down in Texas visiting some family, uh, heading back tomorrow. Going to be a great day. Richard, good morning. Sarah, good morning. Great to see everyone today. Tony Snoozy's in the house. <clears throat> That's right, Tony. We are ready to seek the Lord together. So uh, good morning, everyone. Great to see you today. All right. Today is officially... There is more power than you think Thursday. There is more power than you think Thursday. I'm going to explain what I mean by that. I want, to, I want to unpack an obscure passage of Scripture seldom talked about in the Old Testament. Most of you have probably never heard this story, and if you have, you've probably never heard it explained. So I want to do that this morning. It is in 2 Kings chapter 13, verses 14 to 19. 2 Kings chapter 13. Uh, the prophet Elisha, when, when Elisha was in his last illness, he was ready to die. Uh, King Jehoash of Israel visited him and wept over him. My father, my father, I see the chariots and charioteers of Israel, he cried. Elisha told him, get a bow and some arrows. And the king did as he was told. Elisha told him, put your hands on the bow. Then Elisha laid his own hands on the king's hands. Don't miss this. Elisha the prophet, after he says, get a bow and arrow, some arrows, and he says, put your hand on the bow, then Elisha, representing God, puts his hand on the king's hands. In other words, the hand of God is now empowering the king's hand. Don't, don't miss that. God's hand is on his. Then he commanded, open that eastern window, and he opened it, and he, then he said, shoot. So he shot an arrow. Elisha proclaimed, this is the Lord's arrow. It's an arrow of victory over Aram, for you will completely conquer the Arameans at Aphek. Then he said, now pick up the other arrows and strike them or shoot them against the ground instead of out the window. So the king picked them up and struck the ground, shot three arrows into the ground. But the man of God, Elisha, was angry with the king. He said, you should have struck the ground five or six times. In other words, you should have struck, you should have shot six, five or six arrows into the ground. He, he says, then you would have beaten Aram until it was entirely destroyed. But now you will be victorious only three times. What's happening here? He's giving the king a, a final prophetic word. He says, shoot an arrow out the window. First, Elisha puts his hand on the king's hand, representing God's power, God's hand on, on what the king does. He says, this is the Lord's arrow as he shoots it out the window. Then he says, shoot, shoot more arrows. He only shoots three. The prophet scolds him. He said, you should have realized the power that God has put in your hands. You should have realized the power that God has put in your hands. If you did you would have shot five or six arrows. If you understood how powerful this simple act of obeying what God tells you to do is, you would do it all the time. And here's what I want to say this morning. We don't understand the incredible power that God has placed in our hands with certain things. And for the next week or so, I'm going to talk about the simple things that God has put in our hands, things that the Lord's asked us to do, that if we really believed there was power in it, we'd be doing it all the time. Just like king, the, the king of Israel, if he really believed that, that if he was shooting those arrows according to the Lord's command, he would have shot them all day long, knowing that they had great power. All right? This is, this is there's more power than you think Thursday. We underestimate the power of simple things God has instructed us to do. Because if we did, we'd do it more. And I want to talk this morning really quickly about the power of short, in-the-moment prayers. The power of short, in-the-moment prayers. By in the moment, I mean as you're going through your day. In the moment, you stop and you pray. Or you stop and you pray for someone. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18, Paul says this, Rejoice always and pray without ceasing, uh, for this is the will of God 
for you in Christ Jesus. Pray without ceasing. How do you pray without ceasing? You can't go through your day unless you're retired and you have no responsibilities. You can't pray 30 minute, 60 minute prayers. You've got to pray short, quick prayers as you go through your day. That's what Paul means when he says, don't stop praying. Pray without ceasing. Go through your day with a, a lifestyle of prayer. You're praying regularly here and there, short, quick, in, in the moment prayers. And the Bible is full of those. The Bible is full of short, in the moment prayers. I'm going to read some of them to you to encourage you today. Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. The king asked Nehemiah, how can I help you? He says, with a prayer to the God of heaven, I said, if it please the king, and if you're pleased with me, send your servant to Judah to rebuild the city that my ancestors lived in. With a quick prayer to heaven, before he answered the king, he just said, Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, help me. Guide me in what I'm going to say to the king. Uh, Luke chapter 23. I'm sorry, Luke chapter 13, verses 12 and 13. Jesus says, when Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. Then he touched her, and instantly she could stand straight. How she praised God. Simple prayer. Dear woman, you're healed of your sickness. Be healed of your sickness. Uh, Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Luke 23, 34 says this. Jesus is hanging on the cross. We went over these around Easter. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Simple prayer, quick, on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Jesus didn't launch into a 15-minute prayer. He just said a quick prayer that was on his heart, right there in the moment. Let's keep going. Come on. Short, in-the-moment prayers. John, chapter 11, verse 43. Uh, we'll start in verse 40, 41. They roll, he's going to raise Lazarus from the dead. Uh, they, they, they rolled the stone aside. Uh, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here so they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. That's it. Lazarus, come forth. Simple prayer. Lazarus, be raised from the dead. Short, simple, in the moment prayer. Jesus didn't launch into a, a 45 minute prayer hoping that, that God would raise him from the dead. He had faith. He just said, in the moment, Lazarus, come forth. All right. Acts chapter 3. Peter and John going to the temple. Come on. Acts 3, verses 4 to 8. Peter and John looked at, at, at the beggar at the temple and said, Look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. Here's the prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. That was it. And, and, the, and the lame beggar walked up, and he, he was healed. And, and he walked, and he leaped, and he praised God. Simple prayer. I, I don't have silver or gold, but in the name of Jesus, rise and walk. Simple prayers. Now, here's what, here's what James says. Here's what James says in James chapter 5, verse 16. This is important for us to confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. The prayer, of a, the prayer of a Christian has great power and wonderful results. Your prayers. Here's your challenge today. Your challenge is whenever the Holy Spirit brings someone to your mind, I want you to say a quick prayer for them. Or if you are with someone today and, and, and they share a need with you in the moment, right then, I want you to pray with them. We underestimate the power of short in the moment prayers. If we didn't underestimate it, we'd do it all the time. We'd go through our day saying quick prayers. Lord, I need help right now. Lord, pray, bless so-and-so. Lord, heal so-and-so. Lord, work in their lives. Work in my child's life. As we go through the day, as, as the Lord brings someone to our mind, quick prayer. We just That's praying without ceasing, friends. Come on. So, so your prayer, James says, has great power and great effect and brings great tremendous results. Elisha told the king, you know, hey, now, now, now strike some arrows into the ground. He only did three. I don't know if he, did, if he didn't believe it, would, it would meant anything like this. I'm just shooting arrows into the ground. No. The prophet had put his hand on the king's hand and said, God, this is, this is the arrow of God. This is the prayer of God. This is the prayer of the Holy Spirit. This is a short in the moment prayer that's going to bring great power in your life. You do it with your kids. You do it with your friends. You do it at work. You do it with, with people you come in contact with. You in the moment, you say, God, move. Lazarus, come forth. Stand in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Just quick 
in the moment prayers that will have great effect. Come on, we're going to pray this morning that, that, we'll, that we'll believe that our prayers have great power. Lord, this morning, just pray with me, friends. Just say, I believe, just tell the Lord, I believe that my prayers, like James said, have great power and produce great results. Just tell the Lord that this morning. God, I believe that my prayers, even if they're short, like Nehemiah, God, even those short prayers, Lord, strengthen my hands. Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, touch this person. Lord, help my child. Lord, whatever it is. God, I, I thank you today that my prayers have great power. And Lord, I commit this morning to praying through my day. Just tell the Lord that. Lord, I commit to be available to pray throughout my day today. Now, now ask the Holy Spirit for courage. Holy Spirit, give us courage today. That when we come in contact with people that need prayer, that we don't just say, well, I'll pray for you later. But God, that we would have the boldness in the moment to pray for those people. And Lord, anoint our hands. Anoint our hands so that when we lay them on people, your power would flow through us today. Ask the Lord this morning. Say, God, anoint my hands. Put your power on my hands so that when I lay them on people, they, they'd be free. They'd be healed. They'd be restored. God, they'd be changed. They'd be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit in the moment. And Holy Spirit, remind us as we go through the day. Remind us as we walk through our day, when you bring someone to our mind, that we would just pray for them in the moment, God. Or when we encounter people today, in the moment, show us that we are to pray a prayer of faith in that moment. Lord, we, we need you, Holy Spirit. And we, and we commit today, God, to go through our day and to strike as many arrows as we can. God, because we believe these short prayers have tremendous power in our life. And so we're committed to praying today without ceasing as we go through our day in Jesus' name. And everybody said, come on. Everybody said, this is there's more power than you think Thursday. Your, proud, your prayer has way more power than you think. If you believe that as you go through your day, you would be praying constantly, continually for people. You're driving in your car. You're taking a walk. People come to your mind. Boom. You say a quick prayer for them. You pray for them. Your child is struggling a little bit. As, as you remember them, you pray right there in the moment. Your friend with cancer your aging parent, whoever it is, you're praying in the moment. Nehemiah did, Jesus did, Peter and Paul did. Everyone in the Bible, man, they had these short, quick prayers. That's praying without ceasing. Friends, you, your prayers have way more power than you think. And I'm challenging you today to walk through your day and every time the Lord brings someone to mind, you say a quick prayer for them right then. I want to hear tomorrow morning what happened. I want to hear tomorrow morning exactly how God guided you and directed you. Your hands are anointed this morning to lay them on people and see great things happen. It's a great Thursday. Have an awesome day. We'll see you tomorrow morning.